June 17, 1775. Boston, the capital of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, is under siege by rebel American forces. The American War for Independence has begun earlier this year with continental successes at the battles of Lexington and Concord. Agitation has been growing in the colony and thousands have joined the rebel cause and marched on the provincial capital to unseat the garrisoned loyal troops and liberate Massachusetts from British control. However, despite the rebels successfully laying siege to the Boston Isthmus, the mighty Royal Navy controlled the surrounding waters and are able to resupply the garrison from the sea. The American plan is to occupy strategic positions around Boston, specifically the Bunker and Breed Heights on the Charleston Isthmus to the north of the town. From there, they can bombard the town into surrendering. The commander of the British garrison is General Thomas Gage, who had been given the task of governorship of the rebelling colony of Massachusetts. It was his orders to confiscate rebel weaponry that led to the engagements at Concord and Lexington. Outnumbered, the British fall back to the Boston stronghold, where they are reinforced from the sea. By now, the garrison numbers as many as 6,000 regulars. With significant numbers of troops in control of the waters, the British can now set about systematically eliminating the newly built American entrenchments that surround the town. The British general, William Howe, volunteers to personally lead a direct assault on the Charleston Peninsula, declaring that it will be easily carried. The British are dismissive of the quality of the rebel fighters, However, an American royalist warns that his brother-in-law, the Continental Colonel William Prescott, and his men will fight to the gates of hell. In all, 3,000 British soldiers cross the River Charles to take the Continental positions. Howe is to lead the attack on the right flank, whilst Brigadier General Robert Piggott will lead a direct assault on the redoubt from the left. In reserve, the British are able to call upon Major John Pitcairn and his 300 War Marines, in addition to artillery support from Boston and Royal Navy frigates. Colonial militias known as Minutemen have been raised from the surrounding countryside as a direct response to a build-up of a large British garrison in Boston. After securing a strategic victory at Concord, the rebels are able to assemble an army that far outnumbers the British, totalling some 15,000 men. It is this force that will lay siege to Boston under the overall command of General Israel Putnam. On the night of the 16th of June, American Colonel William Prescott is ordered to lead 1,200 men onto the Charles Peninsula to deploy artillery on the Bunker and Breed Hills. During the night, fortifications are constructed in close proximity to Boston on Breeze Hill. These constructed redoubts allow a perfect enfilade for the defenders to fire down upon any would-be attackers. However, despite the entrenched position on the hilltop, the continental defences are unable to be completed by the morning, so that any flanking manoeuvre from the enemy may compromise the entire rebel position. General Piggott on the British left leads the 38th, 43rd and 47th regiments of line towards the rebel redoubt. This is a feint for Howe's decisive attack on the right to overwhelm the American forces. Once within range of the fortifications, both ranks open fire, but the British regulars have little cover and receive heavy casualties. General Howe meanwhile deploys his grenadiers and light infantry to assault the waterside flank on the American left to envelop their lines. In addition, he can call upon the 5th and 52nd regiments as a reserve. Howe is confident of success, but the light infantry had proved to be fallible having fled during the recent engagements at Lexington and Concord. The grenadiers, anxious to carry the enemy lines, begin an assault, but instead of pressing at home, stop short and open fire, stalling the British advance. Militia from New Hampshire, defending this flank, fired devastating volleys into the grenadiers, inflicting heavy casualties on the front ranks. The 5th and 52nd are ordered forward but become entangled with the still stationary grenadiers, creating confusion in the British ranks. To compound the situation, the light infantry fire into the right flank of the grenadiers, believing them to be Americans through smoke caused by cannon and musket fire. British muskets respond ineffectively due to the enfilade, and many of their shots pass above the defenders. With the ensuing chaos and heavy casualties, Howe's troops withdraw. The British reform on the beachhead, and with reinforcements from Boston, Piggott attempts another assault on the redoubt, this time to overwhelm the hill. Simultaneously, Howe leads another attack on the opposite side of the ridge and is able to close in on the defences. However, many of his men take cover below the escarpment, but a handful possess the courage to strike at the ridge, forcing some of the Continentals to retreat. 
Meanwhile, confusion reigns upon the hill as many continental units consider withdrawing in the face of a seemingly endless foe and the relentless artillery barrage incoming from Boston and the British Navy. Confused orders means that some American militia withdraw back towards the mainland whilst others remain. The third and final assault is led by Major Pitcairn and his elite Royal Marines. Despite taking high casualties including the loss of Pitcairn himself, they are able to make significant headway into the defences. With ammunition low, the defenders resort to hand-to-hand -hand combat, which leads one British officer to remark later that the scene was streaming with blood. Faced with well-drilled and experienced soldiers, the Americans are no match, and the militiamen flee across the neck to the mainland. By 5pm, the battle is over. British casualties number over a thousand, almost a quarter of which are dead. Significantly, a large number of which are officers, who will be sorely missed in the war to come. The colonial losses number half that of the British, with as many as 150 dead. In addition, the Americans had lost the majority of their cannon that was in place on Breed's Hill. Despite victory for the British, it was a Pyrrhic one, which led to the British command reassessing the capabilities of the colonials, determining not to misjudge or underestimate them again in battle. However, any attempts at further negotiations to reach a peace settlement subsequent to the battle would now be impossible due to the infliction of so many casualties. With newfound respect towards the quality of the fledging Continental Army came a hardened resolve, which in turn would only aid the cause of independence and support for the rebellion. General Gage would write in the aftermath of the battle, The Americans show a spirit and conduct against us. They are now spirited up by rage and enthusiasm. The war would last for another eight years.